Hello, this is our second part of our five part video series on the five reasons why living together before marriage will destroy your relationship. My name is Catherine Gray. Hello and welcome to all our subscribers to this Christian dating coaching YouTube channel. It's great to have you here. If you haven't subscribed already, just click the red subscribe button below. It's completely free and will ensure you won't miss any of our future videos. OK, let's get started. Part two of this series is all about the fact that cohabiting or living together puts the emphasis on the wrong things. The most hilarious justification offered for living together is that you need to make sure that your partner has no annoying or gross habits. This is like kind of saying that you need to jump into the ocean to make sure it isn't too wet. Everyone has annoying and gross habits. It's part of being human. The only way to ensure that your partner has no irritating tendencies is to marry someone in a coma. As for conscious humans beings, there is no mystery. This is especially important for us women to understand. There's no reason to speculate here. Yes, most men are pegs and they'd rather live in utter filth and disarray if left to their own devices. And I'm not being rude here and I'm not generalising, although of course there are some exceptions. Most men's apartments left to their own devices look like abandoned refugees camps when they're single. Their bathrooms are the stuff of nightmare and their kitchens, even if they don't cook in them, look like a nuclear testing site. They're not homemakers generally, in other words, few men are, and you don't need to live with them before marriage to investigate that fact. It is just a fact of life and you're either prepared to deal with it or not. You either love your man enough to cope with it or you don't, and you recognise that you'll probably be the one making the home anyway. Men aren't the only culprits. No one is easy to live with all of the time. We all have our hang-ups, ticks, and idiosyncrasies. We chew with our mouth open, we leave wet towels around, we misplace our car keys, we snore, we have a habit of tripping up while holding glasses full of liquid and spilling them over lovely carpets and furniture. Or we do a million other things that you wish they wouldn't do, but we keep on doing. So what? If you set out to discover these kinds of things before you get married, you've basically sent the message that your marriage will be predicated on them. Okay, I'm marrying you because you aren't too annoying or gross or inconvenient to have around, you say. But what happens after a few months of actual marriage when certain annoyances and inconveniences pop up? What happens when you realise your marriage simulation failed? The results were faulty. You were duped. They're not perfect. They've got flaws, it turns out. What now? Irre irreconcilable differences, you tell the judge. They left the cap off the toothpaste and forgot to put the milk back in the fridge. Really? So that's the end of part two. I hope it's given you food for thought. And uh, do give us a thumbs up if you like this video, if it's made you think, in the box below. And don't forget, please subscribe. Hit the red button below to make sure you get the rest of our videos and certainly part three, four and five in this series. Thank you. Goodbye.